Now I'm about to do something that is one of the most fun things we can do as fly fishermen and tires. But first, let me set the stage for you. It's October, getting late in the season, and my fly boxes are a mess. I probably have a dozen of them in my fishing bag, but when I get to the river, I usually only put one or two of them in my vest. And there's something like these, a medium or small size guys right here. Maybe one has my standard nymphs and then the other one is probably dry flies. So I'm on the Savage this past weekend. I've been working out in the field all day and I've only got about an hour to fish before sunset. But it's still light enough that I want to fish dry flies. But what fly should I choose? When there's no hatch going on, I'll usually pick a fly based on the time of year or the time of day or the water that I'm standing in front of. So this particular evening, I wanted to fish a caddis because they work year round on the Savage. And I wanted something that was light enough for me to see. And I wanted something that would float well through fast riffled water. So I look at my box and I find one that I think will work. Now I can only vaguely remember tying this thing. Again, my boxes are a mess, but I found a pretty cool one. Now I don't necessarily consider this a fly that I created. It's really just based on kind of an elk hair caddis, kind of a Kings River caddis, maybe even a Latorte hopper. But that's what's so fun about this sport. Taking a known pattern, mixing it up, changing a few things around and finding one that's gonna work for the waters you're fishing. So that's what I did this weekend and it worked out pretty well for me. So this pattern, what I've been calling my deer hair flash caddis, it's really a pretty simple tie and you can get a lot of mileage out of a pattern like this. I'm going to make it a quick tie because I've got about six minutes of fishing footage of me on the Savage this past weekend. And I think y'all are going to like it. So there it is in the vise, my generic deer hair flash caddis. And this is a size 14. I think this is probably going to be my most successful size in this. I'm sure it's good in a 12 to 16. I probably wouldn't go smaller than a 16. If I was on the river and needed an 18, I would just use a standard elk hair caddis. So I've got some cream thread. I'm going to lay a base down to the bend. Now I'm going to put some wax on and take some cream super fine dubbing. Now it's not going to take a lot on this size 14, maybe a two and a half, three inch noodle. And you don't even have to put it too tight on here. But after the first couple of wraps where you're laying some dubbing down, now you can tighten it up a little bit if you want. Okay, that's a little fuzzy, but I think we're fine. Next thing I'm gonna do, four strands of crystal flash. This is a pretty thin stuff. I've just got one strand folded over on itself right here. And you might think, hey, this isn't a lot of flash. And you'd be right, but don't be tempted to put six or more strands because it really can overpower a fly if you're not careful. And don't worry about the length yet. We'll trim that to size after we catch in our slip of turkey wing. And this is about a little bit more than a hook gap. So I'm gonna fold it over tent style. Just lay it right there. And a couple of loose wraps at first check it okay that's gonna be fine and don't worry if it flares on you but we don't want too much of a flare kind of want a flat wing right here and I think we're gonna be fine right there let's see do we have enough room in front of it yes we do a couple more tight wraps right here now we can trim all of this to size the flash and the turkey wing at the same time just a little bit past the bend of the hook right here okay that's gonna be fine now trim it up front and then we'll flatten out an area for the deer hair now you want to take some natural or a bleached deer hair, just a medium sized clump, pull out the under fur and put it in your stacker. Now let's see if this stacked okay. I think it did, we're in good shape right there. Now the length of this, a little bit longer than that wing right there. It is gonna flare up on us, but it won't be too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna go with it right there. And one loose wrap and then second medium wrap. And don't worry about the front flaring. If the back flares on you, that's not bad right there, but let's go ahead and put just a couple of looser wraps or, or medium wraps right here, going back to you know somewhat hold that wing down right there. Okay, now we can go back toward the front of this little band of thread and put a tight wrap. Now, I think we're gonna be fine right there. And what you might want to do, pull a little bit of thread out and then just take a, a wrap, a couple of wraps up through the middle of this. 
And now just pull it all up and, and work on your head here. Now pull all this back and do a whip finish right behind it. Now gather up all the long deer hair, the stuff sticking up front. And what I'll do, I'll give it a little twist, try to here, and then cut it off, not terribly short, but you know, not real long. So that's part of our head right there. Now take a look at it. We are gonna have a little bit of cleanup. I do want some of the, you know, that's a fish's view right there. I want them to see some of that deer hair coming off the side. But if you've got any, you know, crazy ones here, just reach in here and, and trim them. And I think we're fine right there. This is a fishable fly. That head's a little bit messy. Maybe I could trim it a little bit more, but just a drop of head cement right there underneath on those thread wraps, and you got a nice fishable fly. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Stick around if you want to see me fishing this thing on the Savage River this weekend. All right, good evening, everybody, from the beautiful Savage River. I am at the first access point uh, just across from the wood yard. Uh, I've, I'm standing in a pretty big pool, uh, maybe 50 yards or so, slow water, but right behind me is where the fast water empties into it. I'm going pretty lightweight tonight. I've got my seven foot, three weight fiberglass. If I can hook anything with this, it'll be a fun fight. And for the first fly I'm gonna try, it's really, it's just a caddis. It doesn't have a name. It's a generic deer hair caddis uh, with a cream colored, almost yellow body, but it's got a turkey slip under the deer hair and just a little bit of flash. So it's a unique fly. And I, I can't remember where I tied it or when I came up with it, but I just, I had three of them in my box and I think it might do well in this little stretch behind me. So I've only got about an hour um, on the river tonight. So uh, let's give it a shot, see if we can't, pull anything in this water here behind us. Let's try to get up there between those rocks uh, directly in front of me that I'm looking at. It's gonna be hard to get a good drift because that water's moving slower than the water right in front of me. But I'll get a couple of seconds and maybe four feet of a good drift. Sometimes that's enough. There we go, there we go, look at that. All right. Decent fish. Look at that bend, see that? All right, can I get him upstream of me? He has not come up yet, I haven't seen him but he feels good. Yeah, he's solid. All right, try to get down of him. Come on up, buddy. Oh yeah, this is a solid fish. Come on, let me get down of him. I'm glad I brought my net, almost didn't. Ooh, don't go under that log. No, 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 no. Okay, come on. Can you see this? You don't, don't, all right. Oh shit, this is deep water. Missed him, missed him, missed him. Don't go back under that log. Nobody, come on, come on. Oh, well, oh I'm in way deep water now. There we go. Look at that, decent fish. All right, you see that guy? That is, oh, another 16, 17 inches maybe. Let's go. All right, pretty fish. Get on back there, buddy. All right, this next little pool's an interesting spot. There could definitely be something holed up in here. Challenging to fish with a dry fly. I'm standing in some pretty fast water right here. Got some fast water on both sides coming down off that ledge, but you know, there's some still water there. Um, and I'm just kind of lobbing my dry fly over there, trying to get a good drift. 
and see if anything will come up for it. I don't have to be too stealthy because it's really fast water. Hey, there's one. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. And I don't have anywhere to stand. I'm on a slippery rock right here. He's not huge, but uh, he's a fish. Where's he going? He's coming right up here to my feet. Come on, you big buttery brown. All right, now I gotta get my net, which there's a whole nother story right here. I lost a magnet to my net, so I'm kind of just winging it here. All right. All right, wet my hand. Let's pick this guy up without dropping my net. Nice, pretty little nine incher right there. Get on back in there, buddy. All right, here's an interesting stretch of water. Kind of water a lot of people would skip because it's kind of tough fishing, but you know, welcome to the savage. I see three likely spots. This fast shoot right here to the left of that rock, the fast water to the right of it, and then the moderately fast water over there under the trees. Of course, I'll have to wait out in the middle to get to that spot, so let's start with the left spot first. See if we can't pull anything out of here. There's one. Oh, oh, look out, look out, buddy. All right, can I get this guy without the net? Yeah, we can. Not very big, about a seven-incher. Pretty little fish, though. Get back in there. 